a few days ago my page with almost 600,000 followers was deleted and banned due to another creator's smear campaign against me and um, I was going to ignore it because it does not help anyone or any child that I'm advocating for to address trauma and I don't care what people think I just care about the goal which is saving kids but last night I was sent a screenshot of their comments in which I am being fully doxxed and my address and name so now I have to advocate for my own child and keep her safe. So here's my side of the story and the truth. So a couple days ago I get on the app and I see a ton of people tagging me in this girl's videos. And I was at a water park so I didn't have time to watch. But I also noticed I was getting hit with violations out of nowhere even though I hadn't had this happen in a long time. And it was for month old videos and comments. Like one video had already... 12 million views and suddenly was getting a violation i got comments violated for saying things like stfu like people were digging years back to get me strikes so i went private trying to save my platform from being banned and then when i got back from the water park i went to go look at these tags um, on these videos and the first one it was a creator speaking about the tochu situation they seemed well-intentioned i was like oh great this person is basically corroborating everything i've said they speak turkish and they are translating the articles to everyone, so everyone knows I was telling the truth now. And I was like, awesome, well, more awareness on this issue. And then I kept scrolling and saw videos about me and any other creator who had ever spoken about this, just bashing all of us, mostly me, saying I had no idea what I was talking about. I was just a dumb American girl making stuff up for clout. I never once left the app, done a second of researching, translating, and was clueless and had no right to talk about this and was being culturally offensive. I thought maybe she had good intentions and just made a mistake, so I commented, hey, I went private, but I will go public right now just so you can go see how false this is and you can see all of the evidence and research I have directly on my profile. I didn't realize at the time the reason I had gotten all these violations the same day that she was making all these videos was from her videos and what she was saying about me. And so then she replies to my comment, I don't think you know anything. And then minutes later, I'm banned. So I think she baited me to make me go public. And then she was on live during all of this and then told everyone to go report me because then I got banned. I deleted the app because that's just drama that I don't care to participate in and um, stayed away from all of it. And then a friend texted me a comment where she was threatening to take her platform now. So that confirmed it for me a friend who had never spoken about Totu or ever had an interaction with this person. And Canole also shouted her out on her story. She had taken things I had said completely out of context, twisted it to fit her narrative, and was just flat out wrong about things too. She used my video about the recent TV episode that Canole had gone on to talk about our TikToks and stuff. She said that this is months old and used this as an example of how I don't know anything and don't know what I'm talking about. Um, when actually she's just wrong, there was a new episode and there's old ones. In another video, she stitched where I had read word for word what Canole had said in her comments and reposted what she had posted on her story of the orphans on the private jet and just repeated what Canole was saying. And she made it seem like I came up with that on my own and I invented that. And people came to my defense and said, that's not true. Canole actually said that. Kelsey's just sharing that information. She just replied with, that's a lie, even though it was on the video. And then took the video where someone had commented to me, the way those kids walk with the hands behind their back looks like one of these paintings of the Podesta brothers. And I just put them next to each other and said, wow, it does. And put a huge disclaimer. This is not evidence. This is meaningless. This is a conspiracy. I just personally find conspiracies interesting, even if they're very silly. That's just things I'm interested in. And it doesn't mean anything. She, of course, cut that out because that doesn't fit her narrative. Neglected to acknowledge the fact that it was being used to discipline toddlers to walk like this. And it wasn't just the way old men walk in Turkey. And was saying I was being culturally offensive by saying this. I apologize if anybody was offended, but that's not what I was saying. And it's not even in Turkey, it's in Azerbaijan. Once all of the, her argument points had been proven false, um, she used a straw man argument. And this is a common tactic used by call out creators, which I believe that's what she is. Call out creators are people who don't have any original or beneficial 
content to come up with on their own, so they just attach themselves to relevant or trending creators and provoke them and create a narrative around them to drive traffic to their own page. And so a straw man argument is basically something that's acting as a version of me but is not me, but is much easier to attack and punch down and get people to be an angry mob about because it's something that provokes a lot of people. And so the straw man argument was that I was a scammer and I was doing all this to exploit Totu and the GoFundMe was just me stealing money. Even though I haven't touched a penny of it and you're just assuming I'm a bad person and there's no evidence of that and you're doxing me for something I haven't even done yet. And so this straw man argument is invented when the issues of the debate are going to be lost by the opponent and so since she could not prove that I didn't know what I was talking about and didn't do any research she invented a new version of me that was a scam artist so people could still go after me and then got me banned so nobody could see that she was wrong that I did do very thorough research and evidence was all over my page people begged me to start a GoFundMe for weeks people were getting mad at me saying I'm a fake advocate and I'm not doing enough and I have all this awareness and how can I not have a GoFundMe for her there were also fake ones that people were donating to so I said, screw it, let's do one. We all felt so helpless and wanted to try something other than just watching this happen. And I only did this after waiting weeks and exhausting every other avenue. We had tried the FBI, we had tried every organization, we had filed reports with Interpol, with every hotline. And also a follower had been communicating with Canal for weeks, was telling me that she had convinced her to let Totu fly over to America to stay with her to receive her medical insurance and get our good health care. And I supported this because Totu needs better health care. Clearly wasn't getting what she needed. And she said she needed to use my platform to fund this and ask me for help. So that was one of the intentions. But I also knew we needed to navigate their legal system before seeing if this was even possible and I cannot figure out a whole country's court system by myself. I knew we needed professional help and also she had said Totu can't be adopted because her dad won't sign the papers and so I wanted to see if that was even legit or and I also wanted to know the details of their criminal case, what their court proceedings were because they had initiated one and then it just kind of fizzled out and so I knew an attorney could dig up court documents, public record, everything about this stuff that I couldn't do. So I asked my dad, who is an attorney and has a law firm, about this, and he told me, yes, there are foreign attorneys or international attorneys who live in America but have practiced Azerbaijani law and can walk you through this and explain it. So I contacted a legal assistant, and she said, yes, we can help you with this, but to take the case seriously and actually do the real digging, you need a retainer of $10,000, which is why that's how much it was for. Um, And then I had also put in there, if all else fails, Maybe, I knew this wasn't likely, but they had said people could visit. Maybe a few like professionals, social work background, medical professionals could go over there and just check it out. And if all everything else fails, it will be donated to a nonprofit and I will hold a vote. And that is still true. And that's probably what I'll have to do now since you took my voice and my platform and I can no longer help her. There was also a lot of misinformation going around that it was an Islamic state and there was absolutely nothing that could be done. And I knew it wasn't an Islamic state, it was a secular state, but we needed more information on who the authorities were, who we needed to contact what we needed to do, a foreign attorney could have explained all of that. I won't be addressing this again because it is not helpful to anyone. It is not what my platform is for or what I am about. If you had bothered to actually look at my page for more than five seconds, you would have seen that I have been an advocate for exploited children for years now. I was an exploited and trafficked and abused child myself. I am currently in litigation against the cults that did it to me. Also that I volunteer at a nonprofit that investigates organizations that exploit children and expose them. I don't even have a job. I do this with my free time because I want to help people. I'm not just some random person. I don't do this for fun. I actually wanted to help her and now you have stolen my voice, stolen my platform, and possibly hurt Totu more just to make yourself relevant for five seconds of fame. So I went to go post this on my alt account that I don't post on, haven't used, it's private, and look what she did to my account. This is going on YouTube, I guess. If that isn't enough proof that the woman who has been 
spewing hate about me on live and made multiple, multiple videos about me is the person who got me banned. I don't know what is. And then I get told by several people that not only did she plan this, but she slipped up and let people know in Turkish um, that she was getting paid to do this. This was planned to take me down. And Sebji Abi might even be paying her to do this. And told her non-English speaking followers that in Turkish she said, Oh, my entire account is just hating on their culture. Therefore, they should all go report me, even though none of them even know what I'm talking about in my videos. And TikTok listens to mass reporting for some fucking reason.